Welcome for turning into our channel at Joe's Fat Kennedy TV as we take on today's Seed of Destiny written by Dr. Pastor Paul Inench. Let's read and pray along. Any time, any situation of life is affecting your prayer life, that is your relationship with God that is under attack. Whatever does not want you to pray, I'm tired of, I'm tired. All this while I've been praying. Or in fact, maybe you have become so successful that you cannot, you cannot pray as you used to pray anymore. And when the struggle was much, the prayer was high. But now you have started counting billions and you can no longer pray. That is a state of emergency. Before the devil destroys a person's physical life, he will destroy their spiritual life. Because the spiritual is the sustainer of the physical or the material. If ever you love your relationship with God and you love you love your spiritual life and spirituality, don't play with your prayer life. Seed of Destiny written by the senior pastor of Junamis International Gospel Center, Dr. Paul Anenche. Wednesday, the 28th of August, 2024. Today's topic, Love Thinks No Evil. Scripture, for charity suffereth long, and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Five doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 5. Hallelujah, thought for the day, Love does not take into account the wrong deeds of loved ones. Our anchor scripture reveals one major feature of love, and that is the fact that love thinketh no evil. When we say, love does not think evil, what does it mean? It means, number one, love does not recount wrong deeds. True love does not recount the wrong deeds of loved ones. Love does not keep records of wrong things done by loved ones. Number two, Love does not compute or calculate wrong deeds. This means, love does not take into account the wrong deeds of loved ones. You know, there are people who have in their possession a book of record to keep the record of wrong deeds done by people. Every wrong deed ever done to them is written in that book. Any time you offend them, they open the book and tell you something like, on October 1, 1980, at about 12 noon, you did the same thing to me. These people have electromagnetic brains as far people's offenses and wrong deeds are concerned. They have photographic minds to keep the record of evil people did against them. They would remind you of everything you ever did against them. They can't forget the details of your offenses against them. The truth is, you cannot carry the baggage of people's offenses and wrong deeds and succeed in life. Number 3. Love does not maintain grudges, malice and bitterness. Love does not bear grudges, keep malice or harbor bitterness. Now, the question is, does it mean if someone offended you to the point of wanting to kill you, and you discovered it, you should forgive the person and still make him your friend? Not necessarily. There must be the combination of love and wisdom. Imagine this scenario. Someone wanted to kill you. He put poison in a glass of water that you were meant to drink without your knowledge, but somehow, God orchestrated things around it, and you left the water without drinking it, a dog drank the water and died of the poison. Are you to forgive the person? Yes, but would you bring the person close to yourself as a friend? No, if the person gave you water next time, would you drink it? Never, is the person your enemy? No, is he your friend? No, who is he to you? You just know him, what are you doing? you are exercising wisdom, and if the person greeted you next time, would you answer? Yes, should you forgive him? Yes, should you be frowning for him all the time? No, you don't keep malice with the person but you apply wisdom in dealing with him. Remember this, love does not take into account the wrong deeds of loved ones. Take this assignment with you. Number 1. Make up your mind never to think evil of anyone. Number 2. Ask God to deliver you from the temptation of bitterness and malice. Yes sir, our prayer today, Lord, I receive the grace to maintain a pure heart towards everyone. Help me never to keep malice with anyone despite their offenses towards me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. For further understanding, get this message, 
actions that attract heaven's attention and intervention. Quote, who you are determines your, it determines your audience or who can hear you. Culled from the book, Who Are You? by Dr. Paul Anenche, today's daily reading, from the book of Ezekiel chapter 10 to 12. We start with Ezekiel chapter 10, and I looked, and there in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim, there appeared something like a sapphire stone, having the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Then he spoke to the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in among the wheels, under the cherub, fill your hands with coals of fire from among the cherubim, and scatter them over the city. And he went in as I watched. Now the cherubim was standing on the south side of the temple when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and paused over the threshold of the temple, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard even in the outer court, like the voice of Almighty God when he speaks. Then it happened, when he commanded the man clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from among the wheels, from among the cherubim, that he went in and stood beside the wheels. And the cherub stretched out his hand from among the cherubim to the fire that was among the cherubim, and took some of it and put it into the hands of the man clothed with linen, who took it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, there were four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by each other cherub, the wheels appeared to have the color of a beryl stone. As for their appearance, all four looked alike, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went toward any of their four directions, they did not turn aside when they went, but followed in the direction the head was facing. They did not turn aside when they went, and their whole body, with their back, their hands, their wings, and the wheels that the four had, were full of eyes all around. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing, wheel. Each one had four faces, the first face was the face of a cherub, the second face the face of a man, the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim were lifted up. This was the living creature I saw by the river Chabar. When the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them, and when the cherubim lifted their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also did not turn from beside them. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels stood still, and when one was lifted up, the other lifted itself up, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels were beside them, and they stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. This is the living creature I saw under the God of Israel by the river Chabar, and I knew they were cherubim. Each one had four faces and each one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. And the likeness of their faces was the same as the faces which I had seen by the river Chabar, their appearance and their persons. They each went straight forward. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 11, then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward, and there at the door of the gate were twenty-five men, among whom I saw Jazaniah the son of Azur, and Pelatiah the son of Beniah, princes of the people. And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in this city, who say, The time is not near to build houses, this city is the cauldron, and we are the meat. Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy, O son of man. Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and said to me, Speak. Thus says the Lord, Thus you have said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind. You have multiplied your slain in this city, and you have filled its streets with the slain. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Your slain whom you have laid in its midst, they are the meat, and this city is the cauldron, but I shall bring you out of the midst of it. You have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, says the Lord God. And I will bring you out of its midst, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, 
and execute judgments on you. You shall fall by the sword. I will judge you at the border of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, nor shall you be the meat in its midst. I will judge you at the border of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, for you have not walked in my statutes nor executed my judgments, but have done according to the customs of the Gentiles which are all around you. Now it happened, while I was prophesying, that Pelatiah the son of Beniah died. Then I fell on my face and cried with a loud voice, and said, Ah, Lord God, will you make a complete end of the remnant of Israel? Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, your brethren, your relatives, your countrymen, and all the house of Israel in its entirety, are those about whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get far away from the Lord, this land has been given to us as a possession. Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples, assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they will go there, and they will take away all its detestable things and all its abominations from there. Then I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within them, and take the stony heart out of their flesh, and give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be the God. But as for those whose hearts follow the desire for the detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense the deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. So the cherubim lifted up their wings, with the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was high above them. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood on the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. Then the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldi, to those in captivity. And the vision that I had seen went up from me, so I spoke to those in captivity of all the things the Lord had shown me. Hallelujah! Ezekiel chapter 12, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, which has eyes to see but does not see, and ears to hear but does not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, son of man, prepare your belongings for captivity, and go into captivity by day in their sight. You shall go from your place into captivity to another place in their sight. It may be that they will consider, though they are a rebellious house. By day you shall bring out your belongings in their sight, as though going into captivity, and at evening you shall go in their sight, like those who go into captivity. Dig through the wall in their sight, and carry your belongings out through it. In their sight you shall bear them on, your shoulders and carry them out at twilight, you shall cover your face, so that you cannot see the ground, for I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. So I did as I was commanded, I brought out my belongings by day, as though going into captivity, and at evening I dug through the wall with my hand. I brought them out at twilight, and I bore them on my shoulder in their sight. Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? And in the morning the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, This burden concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are among them. Say, I am assigned to you, as I have done, so shall it be done to them, they shall be carried away into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall bear his belongings on his shoulder at twilight and go out. They shall dig through the wall to carry him out through it. He shall cover his face, so that he cannot see the ground with his eyes. I will also spread my net over him, and he shall be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, though he shall die there. I will scatter to every wind all who are around him to help him, and all his troops, and I will draw out the sword after them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, when I scatter them among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries. But I will spare a few of their men from the sword, from famine, and from pestilence, 
that they may declare all their abominations among the Gentiles wherever they go. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Moreover the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat your bread with quaking, and drink your water with trembling and anxiety. And say to the people of the land, Thus says the Lord God to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the land of Israel, They shall eat their bread with anxiety, and drink their water with dread, so that her land may be emptied of all who are in it, because of the violence of all those who dwell in it. Then the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall become desolate, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Son of man, what is this proverb that you people have about the land of Israel, which says, The days are prolonged, and every vision fails. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Tell them therefore, Thus says the Lord God, I will lay this proverb to rest, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, The days are at hand, and the fulfillment of every vision. For no more shall there be any false vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass, it will no more be postponed, for in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord God. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, look, the house of Israel is saying, the vision that he sees is for many days from now, and he prophesies of times far off. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord God, None of my words will be postponed any more, but the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord God. Hallelujah. Amazing fact, bees can fly higher than Mount Everest. Today's prophetic word and declaration, grace to walk both in love and wisdom be released unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. this moment in the name that is above every name that by the release of this oil this anointing you are released into enlargement the single shall enlarge into the married life the marriage shall be enlarged unto fruitfulness businesses shall expand across the country and beyond the country your influence shall extend beyond where it is now in jesus name